Now, did you see, I guess, sort of the corporate wing of the party and the activist wing of the party represented, or did it feel very much like, you know, well, it's, in it's, Vesco it's, world? It, it's or hard to. It's hard to. I mean, you have you have basically have three different worlds there that I saw. You had the inside the convention center, which, like I said, is a freak show with you know, I mean, some good people in there, but just a lot of people are, like, eh, you know, I mean, oh, Tom Daschle, wow, you know, I, you know, it's, it's like is Donny Osmond here too? Are we really gonna get excited? Um, so that I didn't get. I, I didn't get that. I mean, you know, I, I remember when Harry Reid was up there giving a speech. Have you ever heard Harry Reid speak? Yeah, I have. I, remember, I mean, I, I, I could have read the phone book and it would have been more. I mean, I, everybody was tuning in Harry Reid. Um, so Mr. Clinton, Bill delivered the goods? That was, that was, you know, that was cool. That was cool, you know. Um, Anyone else get high ratings from you for speechifying? Not really. No? No, no, I, and I, I didn't, uh, I mean, Obama's speech was okay. I didn't actually make it into Vesco. I bailed before. That was a four-mile wait or something. The heat, yeah, I got, I got tired of that. I'm like, you know, I don't think I'd wait for the Beatles that long. <laughs> So, and I like the Beatles. So, you know, it, it was fun. It was a good experience. I got a lot of good memories. I uh, ate some good food, met some nice people. Um, it was weird how being in that big tent thing that we were at, mm -hmm. that there was like Wednesday got weird. And all of a sudden, that started getting a lot of focus. And next thing you know, there's somebody interviewing from Roman television. I think I'm on Roman TV somewhere. And, uh, and then Channel 11, New York, which I used to watch when I was a little kid, they were sticking a mic in my face. And then some of as this is all going on, I get this email from the Indianapolis Star, and there's a picture of me on their website. I'm like, okay. And then, and then right after that, Peter, uh, Peter Welch's people call, and they wanted, they wanted to take a little tour around the Big Ten, but I showed them right. It was, it was just, you know. And the Big Ten is kind of where the bloggers were housed. That's, yeah, that, and that the was, traditional that was, media that was kind geek, of came in. That was so. Geek Central. Yes, that was Geek Central. If there was like a Star Trek convention next door <laughs> or, or Yes concert upstairs, then it would have. But you guys were like free content for the traditional media. They could come in and boom. Yeah, like, like, like kind of like, you know, I was expecting somebody to give me a banana or something. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it, was, it was kind of funny. Wow. Um, so we've moved along since then, and as we're, we're taping, we are, well, we just had the first presidential debate uh, between McCain and Obama. Mm -hmm. um, there's a $700 million, bazillion, billion dollar uh, bail package on the table is yet to pass, and then the Biden... Uh, Palin debate is coming up Let on me Thursday. see. The, the bailout thing, actually, I got a little secret. I brought that down. Did you really? Yes, I, I, was, I, I suspended blogging and went back to Washington. And, <laughs> um, but it was so quick you didn't notice because I had the little time delay post. So you thought I was there. And Excellent. I derailed that whole thing. There's nothing really else to say about that one. Excellent. Um, it was you and the House Republicans, as I understand it. That's right. Man. That's right. You know, I mean, I, I've been as unpopular as dog crap, too, at times <laughs> in my life. So, you know, I, I can relate. Um, and um, the bailout thing, I mean, it's just such a mess. I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm not, I'm not an economist and I don't play one on TV. Uh, but as far as the, uh, the other two things you mentioned, the debate, I watched the debate. I was first of all surprised at how well behaved everyone was just in terms of, you know, there wasn't this, where's your flag pin? Do you love America? Where's yeah. that monkey over there? Yeah, I mean, the I questions was, were legit. That, right? that kind of surprised me. But that, that death rictus grin from McCain there, I mean, I have to go see the proctologist or You're something. You're making excellent eye contact, by the way. That's, oh. a, that's a skill he needs to learn when he's talking to his, <laughs> his I opponent. I think it's coming out now. <laughs> um, I think he was really just PO'd that his little stunt didn't work and he had to show up and actually yeah, debate. Yeah, you know, yeah, he's like, you know he, he was thinking about the night before when he was eating dinner with Joe Lieberman. You know, and right. So, some good luck. Case. But, uh, you know, and so the, but the thing, I, I, I'll, I'll just mention this, but the thing that did strike me about the debate is you know, Obama came up with this commercial afterwards. Oh, you know, nobody said middle class. Or, or, or McCain didn't say middle class. I'm like, well, you know what? Nobody talked about poor people. Nobody mentioned poverty. And I was just that, that's it. that was the thing that, I'm just regurgitating blog posts here at this point. But <laughs> that was the thing that struck me. One night I, I missed my bus stop on the, way back from Den uh, on the way back from the convention hall. So I had to ride around this whole area, really crappy part of Denver. And, you know, seeing the, the things you don't normally see too much in Vermont. You yeah. Know, the mumbling person on the street and the, and the, the wino. And, the, and right. it's just like, wow, it's like, I don't think any of the, you know, what's going on down there really has anything to, you know, do with these people. The major disconnect. And Obama, I guess, is basically bragging that he said middle class three times. Yeah, well, like I mean, that he even acknowledges well, I mean, that there's a middle class. And, well, in this there's like, you know, something. the middle class is going into poverty and they'll talk about that, but they won't talk about the people that have always been there or that are, you know Structurally, yeah. yeah. And I'm not I'm not there, but I mean it's just it's it just it just says a lot about how much BS is because middle class people I guess probably vote more and they probably donate more money. So, right, right. You know, I mean, I think you probably reach a level where you just don't care anymore and you just 
give up. Yeah, and Democrats, uh, you're just making me think, Democrats don't even say working class, they say working families, which somehow sounds the, yeah. a little less, I don't know, dangerous. Or the, uh, the, the child free among us don't count. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's, and what was the other thing? Oh, um, the Palin thing. Okay. What do you Coming want to know about that? It's just coming up this oh, week, and we don't know what. Do you have any predictions for the debate? I guess if you can um, look I, in your I, I, crystal I, oh. ball. Like you'll hear that a lot. You'll hear a lot of silences. You're probably going to see uh, them. Just no matter what, how it goes down, they're going to portray Joe Biden as mean and sexist because he can speak. Yeah, in, that's probably he can, already written. Because right. he can speak in complete sentences and, and things like that, and doesn't talk like a, a, a you know a cheerleader. No offense to cheerleaders out there, but um, yeah. Um, uh, you know, it, 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 it's, a, it's a joke. I mean, she's almost making Bush look smart. Uh, it, it's, it's surreal. I, I'm just, you know, what it comes down to is, I mean, he picked her two things, I think, both in profound stupidity. One, I figured he'd pull off those disenchanted Hillary supporters, is if you're going to pick some woman who's like anti-feminist in just about every way, it's, oh, okay, well, she's got a, mm, a hoo-ha, so, you know, can I say hoo-ha? Um, <laughs> And, uh, you know, so we'll vote for her. And the other thing is, you know, she's classic Fundy material. Mm -hmm. And the, the funny thing about this is, is when you get somebody that that's in with the Fundies like that, even marginally thinking people think they're stupid. You know, it's just they're, they're you know, so, you know, I, I feel no sympathy for her and I feel no sympathy for McCain. You know, it's, I'm enjoying it, you know. Right. Yeah. Um, I guess, yeah, I guess they're, they're hoping that Biden will sort of, Beat up Put on her. Beat up on her. <laughs> Which is. Uh, I take away her glasses. Now, um, I guess the blogosphere is is not the newspaper. No, it's toxic. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I, I, did I say that or just think it? Okay. Words get. Well, your mic's close to your brain, so we heard it actually. Um, words get tossed around that you just couldn't publish in a newspaper. You know, people drop the f bomb and such when they're. Expressing outrage. Where is this? In the blogosphere. Oh, um, you're actually, Five Before Chaos, if I get this right, has a good blog keeping incivility certification. certification. Yes, yes, and I think I've earned it. I've earned it. Um, does that, well, the, well, does 